And this, kids, is why God invented switchbacks. Switchbacks, which should be used, but they're not. Causing this giant bit of congestion right here by the Joker entrance. Anywho, I'm not here to talk about the Joker. You all know how I feel about the Joker. It's a wonderful ride. It's kind of not aged as well as I would like it to between last season and this season. There's a little less airtime on it, a little less speed on it, but it's still a very solid ride. Now, let me introduce you to this crowd control nightmare up here. Um, very few switchbacks in this queue. Like, they really cram this ride in, and so there's like maybe two sets of switchbacks in this entire queue, and then the rest of it is just overflow, just complete overflow. But, uh, I actually managed to get on this one. I was on the first ride of the day, and the second ride of the day, believe it or not, because I went through, back through the queue, and actually managed to get on this thing as a single rider. So I was on the first two loads of people of the day, which was awesome. Uh, I, I really do like this entrance area a lot. I wish there was like a tad bit more theming in the actual queue. But then again, as you can see from the actual queue, like I said, it's kind of tucked back in there a little bit. There's only a couple rows of switchbacks. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of chill out here, talk about it, maybe get some good views of the ride. So what did I think of Wonder Woman, Lasso of Truth? I think it's time that this park replaced the Tasmanian Devil because this ride has made the Tasmanian Devil completely irrelevant. That's what I think of Wonder Woman, Lasso of Truth. There's the Joker going up there. I mean, just, just look, at, look at that mess of people, folks. It's just, it's chaos. It's absolute chaos. Uh... One thing, one tip for people going to this park, most of the major attractions you need to get a locker. This, they have cubbies. They actually have cubbies here, believe it or not. It's awesome. It's not scary. It's not scary, but you can like you like All right. Okay, good. Those people are gone. Now let me uh And one cool thing about this is that it really does open up the uh, you know, the views of the Joker a lot more than the views of Joker used to be last season. So, yeah, you know, like I said, you have this, uh, that really good entrance way. I want to get a picture of me in front of the entrance way, but it might be impossible given the crowd control situation. So, let's see, I'm just going to kind of, like, dilly-dally until the actual ride gets going, and then I'll start talking about the ride some more. Uh, the ride has a slow start, but once it starts going, once it starts getting up, uh, there is so much G-forces on this ride. So many G-forces. That was the thing that I noticed right off the bat. Okay, there's, there goes the Joker. Over the stall. Oh yeah. That's some good RMC. Okay, as they're loading them in, I, I just don't want to, like, make the cast members nervous uh speaking of which i gotta give the cast members props man they are uh they are being super efficient in spite of the crazy 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 lines in this park i got through the joker in about a half hour which was not bad at all all things considered now having said that having done this fucking ride twice in a row my stomach is done for the day folks it's just done i did I did Superman once, that was my first ride because it was the one thing open in the DC area. Then I did this twice, and I did the Joker once, and that's it. I have absolutely zero desire to do any other coasters or any other spinny rides. I might get a ride on Monsoon Falls if the queue isn't too crazy. Uh, as I said walking in, my priority right now is going to be the Reptile Discovery, and it looks like, believe it or not folks, because if you've been following this channel, this uh, series, you know. I'm really interested in the elephant area. I think that new reptile show might be in the new elephant area. Anyways, here we go. Let's watch a uh, let's watch a cycle of this thing. So as you can see, it starts rather slow, much like the Tasmanian Devil does. It starts, you know, you don't really build up speed.
There we go, just building up speed, building up speed. Pet peeves galore in this park right now, folks. I mean, we're, we're talking line jumping. We're talking people ignoring the locker warnings. We're talking uh, belligerence. We're talking, you know, just any bit of theme park pet peeve you could imagine right now is going on right now. And cast members are doing a very professional job. So here's where the ride really starts picking up. Uh, the actual tower doesn't go up to Superman Heights, but the ride itself does go up to Superman Heights. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that is where it starts getting really intense. Lots of floater air. Lots of G-forces. It just murdered my stomach. It was just complete murder on my stomach. The first ride wasn't so bad, but do not do this thing twice in a row, especially if you manage to get right on it again. See, right, right there, right there. That's a high point right there. I don't know if it goes any higher than that. It probably doesn't. Yeah, I think it's slowing down. Oh yeah, it's slowing down. But, uh, you know, it, it is a really fun ride, a very welcome addition to the park, very welcome addition to the DC area, you know, just lining up the roster of attractions. All they need to do with the DC area is get an SNS free fly, some sort of Batman ride, and retheme V2 to the Flash already, folks. Come on, just, just do it, just do it. It's not that hard. Anyways. I think I'm gonna try and get like some pictures of the opening area. 